So the question you're asking yourself is, can the Sony RX10 be charged by USB? Uh, this is really important for travel because when you're traveling you don't want to carry the charge brick and uh, just about everyone has access to one of these little power banks. So on the left hand side of the Sony RX10 you'll find a port marked multi and uh, here a standard micro USB. It's uh, a little strange because when you push it in it doesn't click like a multi adapter from Sony. Um, just rests there lightly and I'll go right ahead plug that in to the power brick takes a few seconds and the yellow charge light comes on do that again so no power USB power and you can see there's a slight delay until the yellow charge light comes on Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a power monitoring device and put that in line so we can see what's happening with the power. So I'll just plug that in line. You'll notice uh, initially there's nothing happening. Once the yellow light kicks in, the power's jumped to half an amp. Okay, now I'm going to turn on the camera. The yellow light immediately went out and is no longer glowing and you can see that the camera is now running on half an amp and uh, on the rear indicator you can see a small charge symbol showing next to that and again uh, when I go to turn the camera off you'll see initially the yellow light is out and comes back on and the power resumes charging at half an amp. So it's going to take a little longer because it's only drawing half an amp. Um, this is a 2 amp rated power brick. So the limitation is being imposed by the camera itself. Works really well and uh, just be sure to not push the USB cable in too hard. It's uh, just lightly resting in there. The reason is, is that the multi adapter uh, is the second lock press but the very first part of this is what you want just the light insertion pause wait for your yellow light and you're going when you look at the two plugs of a micro USB and a Sony LANK multi-port they appear similar on first glance but actually one has a very narrow five pin connector and the other has ten more pins at the mouth and that's the reason why they can't be pushed further in the Sony multi-port has those five USB pins embedded much deeper where the red parenthesis is. Okay, charging. First I charged the NPFW50 on the mains adapter and this took longer than I expected, 3 hours 26 minutes before the light went out. Then switched over to the USB power brick. This is a 2 amp power brick and this drew half an amp and took a similar time, slightly longer, 3 hours 46, leading me to believe they both charge at half an amp. Interestingly enough, it stepped the charge and in the last minutes cycled one minute on, one minute off. Very unsophisticated. Now the faster Andoa charger charges at 1.2 amps, and after one hour that actually charged 1250 milliamps, then started to ramp down progressively until it was at 0.2 amps at the two hour point when I disconnected it. Uh, the camera still showed 100% charge.